Okay, good afternoon everyone. We're back for Neuroscience Weekly. We're joined with the uh, prominent neurosurgeon John Adler from Stanford University who's going to be speaking to us about his newest venture called Curious, an online journal which is revolutionizing the way in which academics, private practice physicians, and scientists are all aiming to publish their work. Uh, he has developed this from the ground up. He's the co-editor-in-chief of Curious. And tonight he's going to be speaking about a, a variety of elements um, which are related to academic publications, the cost of publications, the obstacles and pitfalls to current conventional publication methods, and how his new venture, Curious.com, is planning to circumvent this by allowing the masses to publish in a convenient manner. So we'd like to welcome neurosurgeon John Adler from Stanford University to the show tonight. And uh, Dr. Adler, why don't you just give us a quick uh, introduction and background uh, to your career. Thanks, Aiden. <clears throat> well, um, I'm a neurosurgeon at Stanford. I've been in academic practice at Stanford University for about 25 years. I've also been an entrepreneur, having previously started a company called Accurate.com and actually took it public. It's not Accurate.com, Accurate Inc., which we took public. Um, however, I clearly played the academic game much of my career, and uh, I've come to hate it. I've come to realize, though, I'm not unique. It's kind of an interesting and an ironic fact that when young people start off in the academic world, they intrinsically like the idea of publishing their ideas. But it isn't too long before they actually get deep and dirty in the academic publishing world and learn to hate the process itself. They like writing papers, they just hate the publication process. Because in the end, they realize it's self, so self-serving. And so many of the barriers they're put up to publication are not about creating a quality science, it's all about some <clears throat> specific bureaucratic interest somewhere or financial interest somewhere that actually undermines all the joy that should come with publishing. So this is how you uh, specifically started Curious.com in the hopes to circumvent and go about changing the way people publish uh, and how their view is of publishing. How do you think you've been initially uh, accepted by the biomedical community in the past couple of years in trying to get this off the ground? Well, I still, I'm still trying to get the message out. And, um, and there is an innate skepticism about yet another new journal. Like, there are only 5,000 medical journals out there already. And so when you're the 5,000 and first journal, I mean, the innate you know, human nature is such that, you know, does the world really need another journal? Well, the idea behind Curious is we want to fix all the problems of the medical journal world. And... Kind of, kind of the straw that broke the camel's back for me was I was trying to publish a paper in an area which I really was the world expert. And it was somewhat novel. I mean, it wasn't, you know, I'm, I'm not Louis Pasteur's sort of research, but it was an interesting sort of work that had an audience. And I knew there was an audience out there, but there was just a series of jerks who were reviewing my paper on the, in the standard medical journals who were just creating all kinds of arbitrary barriers and trying to keep me from my publication. And it was really, I said, I had enough. I just didn't want to put up with it anymore. And so that's kind of why the, the, <clears throat> the barriers that I'm trying to break down are curious. And give me a chance to talk to a physician. And in 10 or 15 minutes, I can educate them about why things are so broken. And generally speaking, I can make a convert. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So... Uh, I see from the Curious website, which is consistently being you know, modified, edited, and it's quite beautiful. Uh, I myself have published in Curious, and I think that it is an extremely revolutionary manner in which people Thank can you publish. Thank so. I appreciate your support. <clears throat> yeah, it's a fantastic manner to publish, uh, in my opinion. But as a founder and editor-in-chief, what do you think are the uh, strengths and key differences uh, that go above and beyond, let's say, uh, Nature or Cell or whatever other journal is out there, in terms of revolutionizing how academic medicine is spread to the masses? Well, I, I think it's an unrealistic notion that we're going to compete with nature or science anytime soon, um, or New England Journal of Medicine, which is probably the most directly relevant in terms of our area of interest. Um, but 
if you choose, let's say you believe as a scientist or a clinical scientist that you have a paper that's worthy of the New England Journal of Medicine, and you spend the requisite hundreds or even a thousand hours writing that paper, collecting data, and, you know, doing the statistics and editing, you know, and then you send it off to the New England Journal of Medicine. Chances are, <clears throat> 95 out of 100 times, your paper is going to be rejected. And you may even go through a cycle or two before it's rejected. And that process takes a few weeks to a few months. And then you say, well, they didn't like it, but maybe I can get into JAMA. And so then you fly to JAMA. <clears throat> they spend a, a few months going through the whole same process. Your paper gets rejected. And before you know it, you're off to, you know, Journal of Internal Medicine or something. And, and after a year or two, you finally get it published in the Bulgarian Journal of Dermatology. And you're very proud. But you know what? You wasted two bloody years and literally dozens and dozens of hours of reformatting and re-editing and changing and trying to make, you know, reviewers happy. They'll never be happy. Um, and in the end, the paper is rarely any better after this really masochistic process. So mm -hmm. Curious Sense starts off with the basic assumption that any author who has is skilled in the art of medicine who spends a certain requisite amount of time, and we can argue what that time is, in a good faith effort trying to create medical science basically deserves to be published once it meets some base threshold. We're not here to sort of argue about the underlying hypothesis or and argue that you know they should be doing a more sophisticated statistical test than the ones they've already done. They're given an opportunity to tell their story in a scientific format to the best of their abilities providing it is done in good faith. And reviewers are there not to kill the paper. Reviewers are there to critique, give suggestions, and ideally make the paper the best it possibly can. So I'm curious, authors and reviewers are really on the same side of the table here, trying to make the best possible paper. The real action in Curious is post-publication. Because the fact that a paper is published in Curious doesn't mean it's any good. What we do offer, though, is a crowdsourcing, crowd reviewing technique, much akin to what you see in you know, many modern internet consumer sites these days, that uses basically the collective wisdom of the crowd to judge the quality of the paper from the sundry readers that come and read the paper. And from that, we distill what we call our SIQ score, SIQ scholarly impact quotient, which is intended to be a kind of a, a more accurate measure and an enduring measure of scholarly quality rather than some ephemeral and fake makeup thing like uh, impact factor, which has nothing to do with the paper itself. So in the end, we, are, we provide a platform that provides speedy publication for no money for authors or readers, and in the end, a crowdsourcing tool to curate the quality of content which in aggregate makes us totally unique on the internet today. Yeah, I find that to be quite unique, uh, the SIQ score as a method by which the community itself can grade uh, the content of the paper. But maybe you can discuss to our viewers what the SIQ score really is, what it provides for readers, and perhaps uh, as an incentive even for writers themselves to produce something at a high publication value because they know that it's going to be scored by an SIQ. And maybe uh, in your eyes, why is an SIQ score, which is something quite innovative, uh, better than the conventional, you know, impact score of a journal itself? I think you alluded to this, but maybe you can elaborate on it a little bit more. Well, it's a little premature to say that we've proven that SIQ is the equivalent of impact factor. It certainly isn't the equivalent in in the minds of the, the academic community at large. I mean, you know, there's. Nothing makes the, the academic's heart beat faster than the idea of publishing in nature or science. You know, it's, they don't, that's a, I call it academic lust. So they, they, they just can't dream of a bigger, uh, a bigger opportunity than to publish in New England Journal of Medicine. However, having said that, it's also quite clear, as many critics have pointed out, such as Barry Sheckman, last year's Nobel laureate, that this, this lust for impact factor has led to a lot of scientific fraud, uh, a lot of inappropriate 
academic publications have occurred because of the you know kind of false pretenses that go on with publishing a high impact factor journal. But basically what impact factor has always tried to define is the importance of the journal itself. So New England Journal of Medicine, it's read more, its papers get cited more, because its papers get cited more, it has a higher impact factor. Because it has a higher impact factor, it applies, it attracts better papers. Because it attracts better papers, it has a higher impact factor. And so there's kind of a circular logic that reinforces the existing establishment. But it does have this perverse incentive that leads to a lot of people to do kind of, you know, bad things in the name of trying to get into good journals. So SIQ says, well, you know what, once again, we're delighted that someone's published their paper in, in Curious, but that only means that the paper met a base threshold of, of integrity and, and kind of adhering to our formatting standards, which are fairly well laid out. We don't spend $10,000 or, as Nature claims, $50,000 a paper to kind of format papers, which I find a little absurd. Um, but in the end, the paper is done to a good enough threshold where the community at large can critique the science. Now, and it's done through our SIQ scoring process. Now, SIQ is a little bit of a secret sauce. It, it tended to be a proprietary kind of concept that we hope to validate in the years to come. <clears throat> but SIQ is based on things like the quality of the study, the importance of the science, the clinical relevance, uh, the quality of the presentation, you know, size of clinical series, the sort of the standard things that we all come to judge um, a clinical science paper on. We ask our, our readers to do the same for a, a curious paper. And collectively, the community arises at, arrives at what we call our SIQ. Now, it's important to emphasize that while everyone's entitled to opinion, not everyone's opinion is valued to the same extent. So, in fact, your mother is even entitled to an opinion in, in the curious domain. Uh, but the reality is that a reviewer of your paper has, I won't say infinite, but several orders of magnitude, influ much greater influence on what the SIQ score is going to be. Someone who's published in the field has a much greater influence over what that SIQ score is going to be. Uh, someone who's a medical specialist in the topic of interest. So a topic in neuroscience, well, neurologists, neurosurgeons, neuroscientists would have disproportionate influence over the SIQ. But the reality is that if you were to find five million of your dearest friends who all came to your paper and had no background in neuroscience, but still thought it was the awesome, most awesome paper ever, your paper could have a pretty good SIQ in the curious world. And I equate that a little to like a Scientific American article, where perhaps the science isn't so important, but the popularity and crowd appeal and, and sort of a, a consumer quality is, has, in our world of, of, of curious, has also value as well that we respect. So in the end, SIQ is a complex secret sauce, but hopefully this little description helps you understand a little bit better how we come about it. Definitely. What I also find quite interesting about what Curious does and quite helpful is that aside from SIQ, there's also a discussion section per each paper, which you do see in other forms of you know internet venues that publish papers or gather data on papers, in which they invite you know the entire community to come and actually leave comments. Uh, on the paper. So it's not grading the paper itself, but you're actually able to write and start a discussion on the paper at hand. Whether it's uh, in opposition to the paper, in favor of the paper, a critique, or asking of clarification, I think that what Curious has done a nice job of, with is adding a discussion section per each paper in which you know visitors and authors alike, as well as reviewers, can come on, read the paper, and then write directly on the paper in the comment section, you know, well, uh, we really enjoyed uh, understanding the logic as you went from point A to B, but perhaps you can clarify how this relates to, you know, one, two, and three. Um, and I think that that was something that was quite interesting. Maybe you can comment on how you integrated that into the curious, uh, you know, culture of how having people not only give an SIQ score, 
but enabling people from all backgrounds to actually give their input verbally about the content of the paper. Well, this is still very much a work in progress, and I, and I wish I could say that we are getting more comments than we have. And we're not alone. I mean, PLOS has been trying to do the same thing, and not always with as much success as they'd like in a journal called Peer J. So there is a, 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 a movement within the medical or within the scientific journal domain that mirrors to some extent what we've seen in the consumer internet domain where, you know, threaded discussions um, build on the topic at hand. And importantly, in the world of curious though, there are no, there's no room for anonymous, nobody's kind of just, you know, spamming people. The, the people have to work under an existing identity. And if you're going to destroy your online identity, you're going to destroy your real world identity when it comes to curious. So the comments that we've gotten today have been respectful, and we're trying to encourage this to the greatest extent possible. <clears throat> Ultimately, I believe that the comments are as important in many respects as the paper itself. And we would like, we would, we dream someday that that will become a reality, that the that the discussion thread that follows a paper will start to become as meaningful as what the initial authors presented. Now in the physics world, there's a journal called Archive, which is actually a, well, uh, becoming a dominant force in, 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 in physics, in theoretical physics. And they have been very successful in introducing these discussions. So um, we're in the early days, but I would, if I look back in four or five years, I hope to say that we built significantly on this discussion concept and that that comes to increasingly dominate the interaction that goes on in Curious. And we so, plan to reward that. There will be, there is, people don't realize it, and just a little aside, but we are keeping track of what we call points. And so, all our users um, have attached to their contribution to the site um, work that they've done in terms of writing papers, reviewing papers, scoring papers, commenting on papers, and all that's going to be tabulated into a point system. And the dream is some way is to, in part, make, you make Curious a physician-owned cooperative so that these points, the effort that people go into creating our website, will be rewarded. And this, it isn't just my website. It isn't just the editor in chiefs and the editors and the reviewers' website. It is really the community's website. Very interesting. And you know, going off of that, um, what do you think is uh, what is the hopeful future for Curious? Let's say in the next 12 to 24 months, what is Curious currently working on that they would like to change in this field and build and for the website and for the academic community? Well. To build a new journal organically in a standalone fashion has proven to be difficult. I mean, we're growing, we're growing, we're probably doubling every four or five months, which is good. It's good, not bad. But it's not exactly internet speed. In a world where you have, you know, you know, 200 million, you know, Twitter users and a billion, you know, Facebook users, I mean, it's, you got to grow faster than, than our little, maybe our, our six-month doubling rate. So um, having said that, we see some vehicles that will really accelerate that growth. And we're, right now we're, um, we're starting, we have started our first uh, publishing competition with uh, Zeiss Medical, um, in which um, we are with, uh, we are with kind of, Zeiss's, under Weiss's generous grant, um, soliciting papers in an area of medical science that is emerging very quickly and also happens to have some commercial interest to Zeiss. Now, Zeiss has no control over the generation of content, how the content is reviewed, how the content is scored. In fact, the community takes over once Zeiss has agreed to sort of sponsor the contest. But the contest is a way for Zeiss to showcase one of the exciting new clinical applications of micros um, microscopic technology, interoperative microscopic technology. So this idea of working with, with medical device and pharma um, 
and medical device and pharma to accelerate the reporting of clinical information around the use of new technology. I think is rather new, and I and I'm kind of excited because it's it not only does it create content for us, it builds users, it builds an understanding of how the curious system works. So that's one of the tools we expect to use that will grow our platform and user base and content uh, significantly. Number two, we're bringing in um, and working with a range of different medical societies and and leading academic departments to develop what we call a channel. And a channel is basically a, a medical organization, um, such as a medical society, such as the Canadian Association of Radiation Oncology, or, or, uh, or we have a Society for Middle Invasive Spine Surgery. These are organizations that um, have an annual meeting, have several hundred members, and would like to have a journal. And But in lieu of a journal, what they do is they basically have curated a section of Curious where their members can submit papers, they can review it as a community, and participate with it together with some of the editor-in-chief jobs that I do. And in the end, a, a channel is published, which is basically almost like a, a mini journal with inside the bigger Curious journal. And so uh, we have a, a lot of different interests in this particular area. And we're kind of excited and expect to really be able to grow, uh, grow our community on the backs of many, many smaller communities that already exist today. So those two features, I think, are pretty darn cool. And uh, ultimately, the big dream here is that we can lower the barriers to publication, whether they be practical barriers, procedural barriers, process barriers, financial barriers, to the greatest extent possible. And, and our dream, our dream, that our stated goal is we would like to see it possible for any physician to basically generate, write, peer review, and publish a case report in two hours. And um, so that we can really open up publishing to the masses, whether they be physicians in private practice in America or a big or big health maintenance organizations, or physicians in Brazil and in, in, in China. So publishing should no longer be the domain of this elite 0.01% of physicians at the big academic institutions. Medical knowledge resides throughout all physicianhood, and we plan to tap into that and create a fund of knowledge unlike anything that's ever been created before. So Curious is not just a journal. We hope to make it something greater than nerds, greater than a journal. Really a universal fund of knowledge that's accessible by all, created by all, that will really, I think, advance medicine in a way that's never been advanced before. And as someone who has uh, used Curious and plans to use Curious in the future, I myself think that Curious is doing a phenomenal job in this avenue, but I am curious to know about the obstacles that are facing Curious in uh, reaching these potential goals, aside from the, uh, you know, understood financial uh, requirements to run a big program such as Curious or a developing program as Curious, what do you see as a founder of Curious, aside from finances, to be, you know, a main obstacle in accomplishing this goal? Because there are many elements to Curious, as we see the pipeline, the channels, the blogging, the SIQ. Um, is it education of the masses? Is it getting it out there? Is it people accepting this new way of publishing? What do you think from your experience is the most uh, challenging obstacle in getting curious to go a little bit more quote-unquote mainstream? It's, it's just gradually stepping up the, the ladder of credibility and um, I mean science is sacred you know in, in the physician community and in our culture and it's not something to be trifled with and and people need to believe that in the end that Curious is respectful of the, although while lowering these barriers is respectful of the science and in, in that regard you know one of the things we need to achieve we need to get PubMed indexing which is on our you know on our agenda and we're you know we, we didn't get it the first time around with PubMed but we're hopefully in the throes of a meaningful discussion we'll make this happen sooner than later so, I mean, that is, for example, a, a practical issue for many people who, especially in the emerging world or, or out, actually, especially in academia, 
where they look to uh, PubMed as a good housekeeping seal of, seal of approval. You know, when you get to a certain level of your career, you know, you know, a certain level of professor, one that I've reached and my colleagues have reached, we almost don't care anymore. But for many people, PubMed indexing, a good housekeeping seal of approval is important and uh, something that I soon hope to offer my authors and curious. So Fantastic. in the end, it's just climbing that ladder of credibility and uh, I think if I encourage everyone to follow Curious, and I think if you pay attention, you'll see maybe not week by week, but month by month, that we grow in both users and in content and in the quality of our presentation, and hopefully in the ease of use. So, I urge you and all your others, your fellow medical scientists, to pay attention. Well, at uh, Aiden Jacob Medicine and Internet Medicine Weekly, we want to. Uh Sincerely thank Dr. John Adler, a uh, pioneered engineer, scientist, entrepreneur, and neurosurgeon, the uh, founder and editor-in-chief of Curious. We'd like to thank you for your time and for your insights into this new and exciting venture that you're undertaking. And we would like to personally encourage the mass community to take part of this, to try Curious, to uh, you know give it a shot, see how you feel about it. Uh, it's a wonderful experience uh, as I've witnessed several times and uh, hopefully in a couple of years we will see or less we'll see Curious uh, at the forefront of publishing at revolutionizing how people view uh, medical journal publications and uh, to do away with the uh, conventional bureaucratic method by which people publish so Dr. Adler thank you for first of all joining us tonight. Thank you for inventing Curious and uh, hopefully we'll see a lot of success coming to Curious in the near future. Thanks Aiden and uh, I welcome all the Curious. Good Thank night. you. Thank Bye. you.